Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to an in-depth base building guide for scum. And if you want to know how to protect your loot as best as possible and stop your cabins being blown up because somebody placed a C4 on your foundations, then watch to the end of this video because I'm going to give you all the secrets to defending your base and some really, really good base building tips. Now, we all agree that the main purpose of building a base is, of course, to protect your loot, okay, and to have a place that you can call home. Being creative with your base um, can always can also add to the experience, but in my experience, the location of your base has a very big effect on the way you play the game. So, because you build a base to protect your loot, let's go over ways to protect your loot. Now, the first way to pr protect your loot, and yeah, our construction guys is just ready here for a lot of work. The first way to protect your loot is to craft a chest, okay? And then put your loot in there and protect it. So, of course, the way that most people know about is to basically craft a chest and put it in a bush, like here, okay? So, you place the chest. I've got guard mode on, so there it's done. And I've got a, I have got a shovel here in the vicinity. Okay, so because I've put my chest here, it's quite difficult to see. And what I can do is I can bury the chest as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up the shovel quickly. It's just a normal improvised shovel, okay? Normal improvised shovel, guys. Doesn't take a lot to craft it. And then what we can do is we can bury the chest, okay? And a bush, in my opinion, is a very, very good idea. And the two strong things for me about a bush is that the deep, the more the bushes are, you know, if you can get a place where there's a bunch of bushes clustered together, then it's great because you can be inside the bush okay you can be inside the bush while you're interacting with your ch while you're interacting with your chest okay so here's our chest so what you can see is i'm inside the bush and that helps me a lot because the reason i hate putting it burying a chest is first of all you're in the open okay and you can get killed um of course we have all heard the way to cut down a tree, you know, and then bury the chest inside the tree, guys. But chopping down a tree makes a lot of noise, okay? And it's just not a good idea. So doing it like this is quite nice because you can crouch down, okay? And then you have to stand up to unbury it. But at least this bush is giving you some cover and you're not making a lot of noise, okay? I do not suggest putting a crate you know, inside a tree or where you cut down a tree because you're going to have to cut down that tree to get your chest out and that's going to attract people to you. And once a person knows where you have buried your chest, okay, then you're, your glute is as good as gone or you're as good as dead, okay? So that's the first way to protect your loot right at the beginning. And of course, a very important tip is to mark where you buried your chest, take a screenshot, okay? Just press print screen or press the Steam print screen button, okay? So that you know exactly where you buried your chest. And make sure you're standing right where your chest is so that you don't struggle to find it. If you think you're very bad with areas, take a few screenshots of your surrounding areas, okay? So that you don't forget where it is. And then, of course, a big tip, which you can use when you drive a car somewhere or anything, a big tip to find your stuff very easily, okay, at least within seven days, is you just place a blueprint, okay? Just place a blueprint over here. No one else is going to see it, but you will be able to see the area, okay, which you place the blueprint in, and that will help you very nicely to find your chest if you are lost. But of course, the blueprint's not going to stay there um, forever, okay? So just make just make sure that um, you refresh it, okay? Every now and then. And then, of course, you can use it to find your vehicle as well. Every time I go for a cargo drop, I tend to lose my vehicle. So placing down a, a flag like this is nice. And of course, you can place down multiple flags. 
Now, after we've done this, let's go to the second best way and easiest way to protect your loot. Okay, survivors. So here we are at the second way to protect your loot. Okay, and what a lot of people like to do is they like to use garages with single entrances like this. Okay, and then all that they do is they place three golden locks on here. Okay, and then they can put a lock protection on there as well. So now you've got three locks on here and a lock protection and you can place down your chest inside here. Okay, and protect your loot. The problem with this is when you open this door, then anyone can remove what you have worked so hard to put on here. Anyone, okay, and literally anyone can remove, can remove your locks from the doors, okay. Okay, that is interesting. <laughs> um, on a base, it works like this. Uh, well, we learn something new every day. Apparently, on solid base locations, it doesn't work like this. But in any case, when you open the door, someone can kill you and they can get all the loot. Okay, that's the that's the most important thing here. Okay. So we just remove the thing there. Just throw this bottle away. The second way is of course to use a house. Now there are various houses with various strong possibilities. Okay. This house isn't ideal because it's got no other door. It's just got one door. So we can place window fortifications in here and put the lock on here. But again, with one kill, they can loot us. Okay. So it's not the ideal, ideal place. Here again, we can use this thing, but again, um, it's unfortunately just got one place and then it's quite easy to get inside it. So what you want to do is get a place with one entrance. Okay, and there are double story buildings inside of towns with a staircase that only has one entrance and it's got a room inside which is very, very strong, okay? So my biggest tip for you is to not close a house or anything where you've just got one entrance, okay? It's not, it's not a good idea at all, but I am gonna show you a place where you can use this and you don't need to worry about um, people raiding you, okay? Because it's quite difficult at the end of the day. And you get houses like this with doors, okay? If you get a house like this with doors, then you've got multiple protection. So you, you've got this door, you've got this door, and you've got this door to use the bathroom, okay? So this is a nice house. It's just this house doesn't have door elements, which makes it weak. But this is a nice um, design because you do get rooms with multiple doors here, okay? So now let's go look at my favorite kinds of um, rooms to protect. Okay, guys and girls, here we are at my favorite location. And you do get places like this inland, but I usually like to use coastal towns um, because it's just much easier for me to find this kind of house. And it's places that not a lot of people go to. So that also helps you, you know, if not a lot of people like to loot on the edge of the map, that definitely helps you. And that's why you normally see bases built on the edge of the map, because not everyone likes to loot the edge of the map. So that's also a way to protect your loot. The fact that not a lot of people are going to come to you. But this kind of building with the staircase, this is at the moment my favorite way to um, protect my gear. Because first of all, I can put, I can put locks on this door. Okay, three locks and a lock protection. Then I come in here and I can put three locks and a lock protection on here. And then this is basically my loot room. Okay, the strong point about this is that it's on the second floor. Okay, that's a major plus for me. You probably get places with one door that's on the floor, but people can get through those window fortifications. There's no way a person can get onto these into these windows okay so i literally don't have to protect them 
But you do get people that use exploits and, you know, just do things that you've never heard of in your life. So it's very easy to get past that as well. And what I usually do is, like I said, I've got my two um, protections and then, you know, um, it's very easy to craft these things. So I haven't got the I haven't got the survival skill, but I can still craft this fortification. Of course, try and get to this fortification at least. Okay, this fortification takes lead plates, which is a bit difficult. This one that takes one nail, you know, is not too difficult. But let me just show you. So I'm going to protect that. I'm going to protect that. I don't care if somebody can or can't get in there, okay? I'm just protecting everything I can in case somebody can get a way to jump in here. And even if there's nothing here, you don't have to. I'm just giving you an example, okay? So you can put major window fortifications on so that no one can ever, ever, ever jump in here. And now they have to get through three enforced locks with max lock protection. Unfortunately, just one max lock protection, okay, which will let them get about 1.5 damage, which, you know, let, gives them about it's 100, it's about 70, 60 tries that they have before they lose health, okay? That's why on my server, I've got the lock protection to times two, okay, that the guy's only got about 33 tries, Okay, before he has to call it a day. And then, of course, you can cre increase that on private servers. But in any case, um, let me just uh, make this daytime again. There we go. Now we can see again. And there was light. Okay, so now I can put a chest down here. I can put a chest down here. You know, I can practice my lock picking and my demolition skill here. I can sleep here. I can get loot. You know, every now and then I can loot my own place. For some loot okay so this is level number two so level number one is is burying your loot okay don't recommend it but it's a great starting point then path number two is the way that i'm showing you right here and then path number three is the way that most people do it but then we're going to go to path number four which is the way experts do it so if you want to see that Keep watching. Yes, you guessed it. The third way is building a base. Okay, but here at Immersive Gaming, we never think inside the box. We always think outside the box. Okay, and when we look at this massive wall, we see something that triggers our IQ. And our IQ goes, well, there's a free wall, there's a free wall, and there's a free wall. So this should be quite a good idea as a starting location, okay? So now what we can do is we can place down a wall. Okay, so we can literally come and do this. And do you, what do you know, okay? You can actually snap it to the wall. Okay, there we go. We build a little, let's make a little five meter piece here. No, no, make it a three meter piece. Make it a three meter piece. Okay, come on, buddy. Okay. It's a little bit glitchy here, boys, but perfection, perfection never comes easily. Okay, perfection never comes easily. So we build that. Okay. And now what we can do is we can place down our flag inside here. To build the flag, boys, you, you need scrap metal, um, rags, two bolts, and a toolbox, okay? I've got everything on me, okay? I just took some dirty rags, crafted some rope out of dirty, dirty rag strips, and crafted the bundle of rags, and then I collected some scrap metal, and of course, you can stack the nails and the bolts to save time, and the drill and the rebar cutter is basically just for your workbench, okay? so that you can um, do a lot more stuff there. But in any case, I'm still just going to use the guard mode. So you're putting your flag inside there.
Okay, so that's the general setup, guys. That's how you protect your flag. And like I said, you can you can use more level ground, okay? Or start from the wall. If you want this wall to be lower, the door to be lower. I'm sure we can make the door lower, okay, if we want to. We can start, we can start like here. Okay, we can start there. And then we place in the door. Okay, there's ways and means, okay, to make it to make it less. But in case that's the norm, you've saved a lot of building material. Okay, the closest you go, of course, you can put the flag right here in the middle. Just put a little three meter, a little three meter. Okay, then you've saved a ton on material, and then you can make all your stuff. Okay, you you place the outside walls, everything. The big thing, the biggest advantage about a base is this double lock protection. So double lock protection means that the the raider is going to get 3% damage every time he tries to raid. That only gives him 33 attempts, okay? So on my server, with double lock protection, that's going to half it. It's going to give him like 16 attempts to lock pick, okay? So that's why C4 um, is important. You can, you can, of course, lock pick it, but you're going to have to use gloves, okay? Gloves will still protect you from the shocks, but you're going to go through the gloves quite quickly. You know, that's just another way to keep the bases a little bit more safer because lock, um, there are a lot of pro lock pickers, okay? It motivates people to go for C4s. You know, and then there's various ways you can put layer after layer after layer after layer. So what I mean by layer after layer is... I always start with a door, okay, so you can place the door here, and remember the arrow always is always the outside, guys, the arrow always points to the outside, so always make sure stuff is pointed to the outside, okay, and look at the side, of, okay, we need to build this first, and then we need to build this, okay, so always make sure things point to the outside, okay, and then you can make another one and another one and another one, okay? But of course, you need to upgrade this to get, you need to upgrade it once to put two um, advanced lock protections on. And then the, the 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 second upgrade will give you three locks, okay? That you can put on, the, on your door. But then, you know, you can put three layers or four layers or five layers in here. Again, this wall helps you a lot to make more and more and more layers. And it cuts off about 90%. Because when you place down a flag, the flag has got a big circle around it, okay? But that leaves an, a whole circle that people can't camp. So when you come to your base, people can only be in this area. They can't hide on the other side of the wall. So when you come to your base, you've only got one, two, three sides, okay? They can't hide behind the wall. And I mean, you, you can check this place very, very easily. And you can trap this place very, very easily because the territory that you have to place traps in is now halved. Okay, because you put the flag against the wall, 50% of the circle is covered and you can use the other 50% of the circle to place traps and stuff, which just helps to make it a lot more secure. But this is the biggest thing about bases is that it can take two lock protections and three and four locks. And the other great thing about it is if you place traps anywhere, it can't kill you because of your flag. Okay. So I'm just going to craft something here quickly. Yeah. Let's place this thing down. Let's arm it. Okay. Now let's place this thing. Okay. So, when I walk over this, it won't hurt me because it's inside of my flag area, okay? Which is major because you can't do that in a town, okay? You cannot do that in a town. You cannot put down a flag in a town. The second way that I showed you to protect your loot, you can't, cannot put a flag down in a town and then, you know, put traps down because your traps are going to hurt you as well. Okay, so this is the big, this is the big thing. If you guys have any other questions, then, you know, put it down in the comments below. And another, the, you know, um, any other questions. Okay, you place walls, um, you know, you place walls down. 
the towers are great. You can put down a tower and then you can put down the tower thing on top. Okay, some cool baseballing features and of course it's only gonna get better. Okay, so this will help you to look to look over, you know, look, look over your walls. And of course, if you upgrade this, you know, then it's even better. Like here, yeah, this is what I was talking about. Now you even get more protection. Okay. The extra protection helps you a heck of a lot. So there you've got a cool tower, you know, you put your wall on the outside and then of course you craft these, um, you craft these log sheds to keep a lot of, to keep a lot of logs in. Okay. So when you open it, you can put a, you can put a whole lot of um, logs inside here, you know, and just gather slowly, gather slowly. Don't put your loot down yet. Just protect your flag. Start stuffing around with things, okay? And then put the put these things in a set place. Okay, all these things. Put it in a set place where you're gonna be happy with it. Okay. And then you can store a ton of stuff in here. Okay, you can store. Look, this thing is very large log shed. That's a large log shed. Okay. This is a small log shed. So large log shed gives you a heck of a lot of logs. Okay, a lot of logs that you can put inside here. If you if you put crates down in here, do the do this one and this one. Okay, because these can't get picked up. If you put normal crates in your base like this, they can get picked up. Okay, so if I craft a normal crate and I go here to the inventory, okay, if I raid your base, then I can do the I can do this towards my car. Okay, I can just I could just keep doing this towards the car. Now, I don't do stupid tactics like this, but this is what you can do. Okay? The guy can walk with your whole chest and go put it in his car. Okay? Don't put down chest like that, even the best one. The stuff that you want to put down is this one. Okay, no one can carry this away. Okay, they can't carry this away. So they're going to have to break into it. And again, you can put locks on each and every one of them. Okay, I can lock that one up. Okay, guys, this thing hasn't got three locks on it now. Okay, don't get excited. <laughs> don't get excited. Boys, you can't put three locks, okay? I just thought I just thought I'd play around there with you guys a bit. And then this thing, this thing is of course a very nice thing. Uh, it takes a lot more, you know, takes a lot more um, inventory space, or roughly the same. I'm not sure, maybe the same. But these two can't get carried away, so this is what you want to use, um, so that they can't carry away your chest, okay? And then. Um, what else is important? Your bed is important. Okay. If you craft your bed, that this, this can, this acts as a shelter. So you can respawn. Okay. At, at, at your shelter, at your bed. And um, these traps are quite nice. Okay. To protect your loot. If somebody walks into them, they, they will hurt them. Okay. Uh, a lot. If they jump onto this thing, that's going to hurt them a heck of a lot. Also, another way you can place this all around your flag to just irritate the living crap out of the raiders. Okay, you can place, you can make this like a no-go zone for anyone. Okay, just remember this is still going to hurt you. Okay, it's still going to hurt you. <laughs> remember that. Just because it's your flag area doesn't mean it's not going to hurt you. So be careful of that. Um, and then of course we've got the we've got the foundations which you can put the cabin on. Okay, and then you can put the door on the cabin, blah, 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 blah. At the moment, a cabin is your weakest. You can do that. Okay, do that. If you can protect your base very nicely, put, put your, put the, um, 
put the foundations down. Okay, when you put down a foundation, you can just hold the button in and you can adjust the height with your mouse scroll wheel. Okay, so you can you can put the cabin down on here. Okay, do what you want. It's fine. But if a guy puts one C4 on the on any platform that is supporting your cabin, your whole cabin is coming down. Okay, your entire cabin, which is a weakness in the game at the moment. And then of course the reason why we needed the the rebar cutter and everything is so that you can put down your tool, your own little workbench. Okay, so that you don't need um, workbenches to craft certain items. Okay, and the biggest, biggest tip I can give you at the moment is to use a wheelbarrow. Now, crafting the wheelbarrow itself is quite easy. You can see it's just a tree branch that you get from trees, planks that you get from trees, bolts. Very, very easy. The two biggest tips I can give you is always use a saw for the um a saw for the sticks and then a chainsaw for the trees you know just gonna just gonna make everything a heck of a lot faster and then the other thing that i want you to do is when you need to use a tool okay which is a cutting tool like let's say i bought the wall and it's going to take uses of this let me just show this to you So I put down the wall. Okay, now you're gonna see it's gonna take uses of my knife there. Okay, let me put guard mode off. Okay, you're gonna see it takes uses. So when I start clicking on it, it's gonna start using um, this metal saw. Okay. Okay, that's fantastic. <laughs> Normally it uses this. So if you see that uses up this, okay, then just make, especially a cutting tool, just make a stone, a stone knife. Okay, and use it, use the stone knife's uses on the wall. Okay, but yeah, getting sticks and everything is, mu is much faster. Now the main thing is getting the resources here. And guys, this is just this is just so much fun. Okay, trust me, this is just a heck, a heck, a heck of a lot of fun. Okay, this is a lot of fun. So you come here, let's just see, is this thing got? Has this thing got fuel in it? It didn't say if it's got anything in it. Check fuel. I always like to keep in first person and then um, keep my eye on the on the chainsaw to see when the percentage comes up. No percentage is coming up. Okay, so that means it's empty. Okay, so let me just organize fuel quickly. I'll be back now. Okay, guys, you saw there that my chainsaw was empty. So all you do is you get a fuel can, put a little bit of fuel in it. Okay, maybe, maybe, uh, I've never tried this, but you guys can let me know, let me know if it's going to work. Maybe a walk water bucket, you know, maybe a pot, I don't know. Maybe a kit, you know, maybe a bottle. Maybe you can fill a bottle with fuel. Various ways to do this. But in any case, now we can, um, just go here and fill it, add fuel. So I think it's only going to take like one use, okay? One use. You don't need to put a lot of fuel in there, okay? And now we just press R, reload to start it up. Okay, boys, there we finally got it started. Now, you want to use a chainsaw because... The time that you save is about 70% of the time, okay? It takes six seconds to cut down a tree with a chainsaw. 
it takes 19 seconds to cut it down with a crafted axe and it takes 13 seconds to cut it down with the proper two-handed axe that you find okay so first of all you save like 100% of your time and then of course you get more resources so you just cut it first of all you're gonna get a lot more logs than you would have gotten okay so now you just take this little guy here and this is this is how I enjoy baseball in voice. I make it interesting for inter interesting for myself. Okay, now I put the logs in there. Okay, can we put this in here? Okay. So that's four logs. And we take it now. And we go this way. To the wall. Okay. And then we go control C. Or shift C. Because we can't interact with our inventory. Even if we're in a, in a vehicle with shift C. Okay. And here we go again. And we press shift C. Beep beep. Beep, beep. And again, shift C. Beep, 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 beep. And here we go. Okay, now I can leave it because I've processed the whole tree. So now we can just take everything out here. And now, when you process these logs, with a chainsaw you are gonna get a lot more planks you get four planks with an axe you'll get six planks with a chainsaw okay so a chainsaw if you find baseball in tedious guys wait until you get a chainsaw you can get a chainsaw in the world and you can get a chainsaw by cargo drops okay so now we're gonna process this and we're gonna get six planks instead of four Just gonna process all of this quickly. Okay, now I wanna use my hacksaw. I've tested the large sticks, okay? I don't really focus on this because the chainsaw saves such a lot of time. But for interest's sake, we have gotten three long sticks. Is that all the long sticks that we have gathered? No, 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 no. We've, we've got a lot of sticks here. Okay, we've got a heck of a lot of sticks here. A heck of a lot of sticks. So this is very nice. And now we can just process these um, long sticks into small wooden sticks which is going to be much faster actually you know what i haven't tested this yet yet so let's take this this is the only part i've assumed would work this way okay so let's make sure that it works this way okay let's take the chainsaw Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten long sticks and eight small sticks. Ten long sticks and eight small sticks. Ten long sticks and eight small sticks. So that is enough for that wall, guys. This alone is enough for the wall. Because a long stick gives us five small sticks with the hacksaw, okay? So it's literally far, it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 sticks, 58 sticks, okay? That wall 
doesn't need 58 sticks and it's the longest wall. So one, one, um, yeah, one of those is enough to complete that wall. Okay. Now let's just, um, so that was 10 and 8. 10 and 8. Let's see what this does. This is what makes the game fun, guys. This immersive, okay? <laughs> immersive things. Throw it down here. Take this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, it's basically the same, guys. It's basically the same. Okay, it's basically the same. But in any case, let's just start the chainsaw again. So yeah, one. One is enough. But of course, I've got advanced engineering. Okay, let's cut out this boy quickly. Okay, so save, your, save yourself a bit of time, okay? And uh, save yourself a bit of time and, you know, cut this with a chainsaw. this and don't get so far away from your base guys don't get so far away from your base okay stand here and then put these long sticks into your, you know, into your car, into your little thingamajig, your little wheelbarrow. Okay, and then you come here, and then you place your, you know, you place your sticks here on the ground. Okay. This is a max wall, eh? Yeah, this is a 10 meter wall. Oh, I used my long stick. No, you stupid idiot. Why you do that? Why you do that? Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. One, two. Don't use your long sticks, boys. Don't use your long sticks. That's a waste of time. So then we've got a 10 meter wall. Okay. So you can do this with one tree. Now, Except for doing that, what you can also do is build your base inside of trees, which will save you a heck of a lot of time. Okay, but is there anything else? Oh, yes. The biggest thing that I want to show you guys here is when you start a base and you want to make it nice and neat, then like this, when you place it down, Try and get, you can either build it three meters, okay? Build, you can put it at three meters. You can even put it at, what? what's that? That's two meters. So you put it at two meters, so that's one solid piece. You put it at three meters, so that's one solid piece as well, so you don't have to upgrade multiple pieces. Or you put it at five meters. Okay, four meters, you still sure gonna have a leftover? No. So every meter, yeah, every meter is a solid piece. Don't go in between. Okay, but when you go past five meters, then you're sitting with two, you know, then you're sitting with two separate sections, which you, of course, you can build at the same time. Okay, but what I like to do is I like to use this angle. So this angle is saying 90 degrees. Okay, so I bring it in. I bring it in. Okay, so there it says 90. I like to get it on 90 exactly. 
you want to make a very very square thing okay so four meters and right there 90 okay 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 and now I'll put it here and now I can go 90 again okay now I can go 90 again and you can just make it four meters so we want to go 90 again and now we're gonna go we're gonna put this in the inside not the outside we're gonna go zero this time, okay? It's either ninety or zero to get it to get it nice. Four meters, and I want it to be zero. Okay, so you, you can see that looks very very nice, very very square, okay? Now you can place it exactly inside that thing, okay? Like that. Like this. Then you can bold it and then you can destroy this. There we go. And we've got a perfect, perfect, a perfect 90 degree bolding. Okay. Perfect 90 degree, nice and smooth, no gaps. Yeah, that isn't a gap. Okay. Nice and beautiful. That's how you can do it for perfection. Okay. Like I say, guys, if, if there's any other info, you know, I can decorate a nice base for you guys. I saw, I gave you guys a nice little base in the previous video, showed you, you know, what a nice little base looks like. But that's, that's basically the basics, guys. You just don't, uh, you know, use as much traps as you can. Use a bunch of these. Use a bunch of these. Use a bunch of landmines, you know, and bury them. Use laser detonators so that when they walk through your door, you know, when they walk through your door, you put laser, you know, you put um, bombs with laser detonators on. Just trap the living daylights out of your base. Okay, but again... They can still detect it. So let's go to the final, final expert level of building a base. Okay. Now, guys, personally, I have a thought of a safer way than this. And yeah, um, credit goes to six feet high. One of the streamers on Twitch that I like watching that um, focuses a lot on defending his loot and then doing a lot of kill boxes. Okay, but... Yes, this, this is quite a brilliant idea because when you use solid structures, then height is a problem. And what you guys might have not known, there are a lot of places on the map where you can put down your flag, but you just were, you were, you just weren't aware of it. Okay. So let's make sure quickly I put, I put off my, um, guard mode because the guard mode can have influence on this. Okay. So. What you want to do is you want to test all everywhere you go, okay? And sometimes the guard mode stuff's around you, guys, so just test this for yourself. But every little place that you get that looks nice for a solo player, for one guy, not a big town, a house all on its own, you know, a little villa all on its own, a, a, a little cabin in the woods all on its own, a little place that looks good for one character. Try and place down your flag and you'd be surprised, you know, at where you can will be able to place down your flag okay so you can place down your flag in here okay and then just build it up of course i've got the resources in the car but yeah you know, like i say god mode can play around with this guys but trust me this can be done okay so you can put, put down a flag like this and the reason these caves are so great is because you can fit A double wall inside it now if I have never seen a perfect fit in my life okay I've I've seen it now and again I want the arrow to point outwards okay so right there
don't know where the third one is doesn't really matter you can put three golden locks here and two in four so now you have got the advantage of a flag area so you can tra trap the living crap out of this area this little block you can literally trap the living poop out of it okay and then you can make multiple walls for yourself so one one door here one door here and your loot's your loot is protected okay and then you can put multiple multiple doors multiple multiple doors so that your main loot ends up here in the middle you've got these little you've got these little spots as well that you can use here is that that can't be too far from oh, okay 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 so you just you just you ju you're just a bit full of nonsense eh? you're just a bit full of nonsense Okay, but a person still can't get through here, okay? So this can be like your safe room over here. Okay, and a person can't get in here. You can put a little wall and traps here, but there's a little safe room, 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 multiple safe room, guys. For me personally, and again, um, credit to six feet high um, on Twitch. I saw him do this. And personally, I can't think of a better method to protect your loot. This is an excellent method. There is one more way, uh, but it's not more secure than this. It, I think it will just be a little bit more difficult to find, okay? And I'm talking about caves, guys. Go to the scum map, look at all the caves, go and explore all the caves. You'll get very interesting caves to protect your loot. Some caves, you have to go through the water, like you have to go into the ocean swimming to the cave from the ocean and then deep inside the cave you climb onto a ledge of course you can protect those ledges with traps and walls so that the guy can't even get out the water okay you'll have to go there with a the boat and then you can trap you can trap that ground you know um into kingdom come as well makes his lock picking very complicated and it makes the placing c4 traps very complicated okay because you need to place the c4 on the floor so if your walls is on the outer edge, you know, it can make it very difficult for him to place the C4s. Okay. So this is, this for me, definitely the best place. Now let's go look at my favorite way to protect your base and to have a base. Okay, boys. I like to keep things simple. Okay. I like to have a view. Um, the snow is not the best way for traps, okay? But I like to have a nice view. Um, I definitely like it because I'm close to the C2 bunker, which is a great thing. I'm close to the dam. I'm close to the airfield. I'm close to the brick factory. I'm close to that factory. Got a bit of way to go here, but I can get gravel at other places. So yeah, I like having a view. And as you can see, it's concrete walls all around, okay? And don't you like this snow guy, snow, snow guy? You know, the snowman looks cute, eh? We've got the two traps here that are quite easy to see. Okay, so I'm just going to pick them up. Um, disarm. I need wire cutters. I mean, it's my trap. But, uh, in any case. There we go. I wanted to say it's my trap. Pick up. There we go. But yeah, guys, I like to keep things um, simple. Three locks. Okay, three golden locks, two lock protection. Three golden locks, two lock protection. Three golden locks, one lock protection. And then I just like to chill here. Drink a beer. That's it, man. Just relax after a hard day's work. Yeah, just drinking a nice, good beer with some music. And my fireplace. I don't have to cook meat inside of here, guys. I really don't have to. Okay, if you want a more immersive experience.
that's it okay this is a much more immersive experience and i can lock up my lockers yeah i've got everything i need here i can maybe just i think the only thing that's missing is maybe a spawn point so i can put a little bed here by the fireplace okay now i've got my own little spawn point here so yeah this is the way i like to hang out so nobody can get in here nobody can blow my cabin up because my cabin is a single place okay and i can trap the crap out of this place okay and remember that snowman i and remember guys this is not it okay you can put layer around layer around layer around layer with towers with traps inside you can layer the crap out of it okay you can play pl place a lot of traps and everything you can block them completely but remember this guy I closed up I did close up this flag okay there was a concrete wall here and a concrete wall here I just opened it up for you guys so if I destroy this concrete wall no 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 the flag I want to destroy the flag destroy the flag you need a sledgehammer to destroy your concrete and brick stuff okay Remember the snowman, guys? The snowman is quite cute, eh? It's cute, man. It's cute. It is really cute. Okay? There's a trap inside there, guys. Okay? It's a trap inside here. So, yeah, here we can put a motion sense on. So, let me just give you guys an example here of where tactics comes in. Okay, so we place that there. Let's place it there. Uh oh! Okay, guys, as you can see, I've died quite a few times, okay? The motion sensors are extremely sensitive. You can't bury this, uh, but there are things that you can bury, okay? And that will help you a lot. If you bury items underneath stuff, then it will help you a lot. And if I remove this flag here, okay? So this guy comes, like, I can, I, I've got no problem here, okay? Let me just, let me step away from this thing quickly. Um... Take my two tools here. Okay, so now I'm someone who just comes here. Okay, I'm just coming here. Oh, this is a nice base. I wonder what's here. Okay. So you can protect traps underneath like snowmen and signs and stuff like that. Okay, there's various ways to protect stuff. Um, and then the other thing is mines, you know, destroy everything. But then you can craft things like this. If you're away from your base, you know, um, or if you're online a lot and you just want to make sure you don't get raided online. Or if you want to know when somebody moves past your base. Okay, um, where are we now? Where are we now? I'm sure I could have crafted that thing, man. I'm sure I could have crafted that thing, man. Yes, it's at the survival. This is these are just warning traps. Okay, so if I, if you put this thing inside, if this is a trap, it's not going to do anything to to the other guy. Okay, so it doesn't help you doing this inside. The only time when this helps you is to let you know when people are close to your close okay there we go so now the trigger area is outside okay so if this guy just comes to look around it triggers it's going to trigger okay it's going to trigger you, your trap and tell you that someone is there Okay, you can put this inside your walls everywhere. Okay, you can put this inside your wall everywhere.
everywhere, okay? All out, all on the outside of the base. And then people, you will always be notified if people are snooping around, okay? But of course, you can trap the living crap out of this base. You can put layer after layer after layer. And it, okay, and I just walked over that. Okay, so that was buried. Now I walked over it because it's not my base. And then we can trap, we can make our whole floor here a living. We can do this for our entire floor, guys. For our entire floor. Okay. Just want to quickly see. Okay, that guy died. What did he have on him? Um, yeah. Okay. But this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying, guys. This is what I'm saying. You can, you can trap the living poop out of this thing. So if this guy wants to climb in here, let him come, boys. Let him come. You can trap the poop out of everything. Okay. So if he falls in there, he's dead. Okay. He can trigger these things a lot, but he's going to keep on dying. And if he thinks he's clever, you know. If he thinks he's going to fall in here multiple times. That's why I've got a server where it costs a lot to respawn. Okay, so that people don't abuse this. You can keep doing this. Okay, so let him, let him take his turns. Falling in here forever. Okay. So guys, that is my favorite way. Okay. That's my cabin. I don't build a cabin. That's my cabin. Because now I'm getting the flag advantage. I'm getting the indestructible wall advantage so that they have to lockpick to get into my into my cabin. But they have to lockpick to get through all my walls as well. Or they have to blow through all my walls. And if I leave a two meter gap between all my walls, it's 3C4 for this concrete. It's 3C4 for the next concrete. For the next concrete. For the next concrete. It doesn't matter how many doors I put in here. I can trap this floor and the next floor and the next floor. Okay? I can tra trap the living crap out of this base, guys. So, I hope this helped you. Okay, there's a lot of fun things to do. There's a lot of ways. Um, there's a lot of things that you guys can figure out for yourselves. And there's a lot of fun things. But this is my last episode in this guide series. And um, if you guys enjoyed all the information that I've given you, if you found the series helpful, please leave a like and hit the subscribe button. Uh, because, yeah, um, to tomorrow I'm going to start with... or. No, maybe today because the processing, the YouTube is processing my videos quite slowly. Uh, but yes, I am going to be starting the ultimate one life survival challenge today, which I'm very, very excited about. And, you know, when the devs bring out the met new metabolism system and all those damage stats, I've got something else to sink my teeth into. So thank you for spending some time with me. Have a blast, guys. And this game is absolutely great. And like, I, like my motto is always, it's what you make of it. Okay, it's the way you play the game that depends on how much you enjoy yourself. Don't look at what other people are doing. Look at what you do and get the most out of your experience, guys. Cheers.